That kid was amazing. Yeah. You know, on that on that joint. Yeah, shout out to Juice too, man. Like yo, he that kid was so talented, man. He was really smart. You know, he was really talented and rapping was something that he was extremely good at. Fame hit him really fast. You know, he, he blew up overnight and literally became like one of the biggest artists in the world. Man, I don't know. You know, that was my real little brother, bro. So it's like, I don't know. This, this shit is real. PTSD is real. Anxiety is real. You know what I'm saying? Addiction is real. He had a lot going on. Like, just around him, he had a lot of personal things. And You always had issues with drugs even before you started to get famous and uh, rich? Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, it was something that I was into early, low-key, due to music. I hope everybody having a good day. Um... Uh, I hope everybody accomplished something significant. Even, even, even if you didn't accomplish anything significant, don't be discouraged. Just aim to accomplish something significant tomorrow. If anybody's going through anything, I, I hope and I pray that you get through it. And just know that you do have the strength to get through whatever the fuck you're going through, no matter what it is. <laughs> In the last decade of the 2010s, the Chicago rap scene was a prominent force in hip-hop. In the early 2010s, the Chicago drill scene music was born. And it for sure was something very different, very aggressive, and very dark sounding music. And ultimately, that ended up dominating what Chicago would be for the 2010 decade. That was until a kid by the name of Juice World blew up in 2018. Juice World was a breath of fresh air for the Chicago rap scene after years of drill music. Juice World brought something completely different to Chicago that it had been missing for quite some time, which was feelings. He was very vulnerable on tracks and let it be known how he felt, especially when it came to relationships. And since his influence wasn't just hip-hop, but also rock music and various other genres, it brought a whole new taste to Chicago. Juice World was born on December 2nd, 1998 in Chicago, Illinois. He grew up in the South suburbs, spending his childhood mainly in Calumet Park and later moved to Homewood. His parents divorced when he was only three years old and he was immediately drawn to music because just at the age of four, he started playing and learning how to play the piano. I've been playing piano ever since I've been like four and then guitar I picked up. Um around like seventh to eighth grade. His mother was very religious, so she didn't allow him to listen to any hip hop music or anything really vulgar. So he started getting into rock music and this is where his passion for rock music grew. He started listening to Green Day, Lickin Park, so on and so forth. And later on, this would become a blessing because it would expand his horizon when it comes to creating music. He would eventually get into hip hop by visiting his cousins and they would put him on to the music that came out during that time, which was Future, Lil Wayne, Drake, so on and so forth. Mama like rock though, so mama put me on rock. But my cousin, them, that was Gucci and Sosa and Wayne and Jeezy and... Drake and fabulous and, and since he couldn't play that music in his mom's house he had to remember it by trying to remember the lyrics and when he would forget certain lyrics he would freestyle in the missing part that he forgot and this would be the early stages of him creating music I ain't gonna lie it really started because my mom was she used to be super strict when I was like a little kid on the music I could listen to and I used to go over my cousin's crib and bump Wayne Gucci Jeezy mm -hmm. um Jewels, you know what I'm saying, everything. And I'd come back home and be reciting the lyrics in my head and forget some of them. And i just add my own lyrics in there to fill it. Mm -hmm. And then that's just how I started. I was like four or five years old doing that. So like, 
eventually I just, I think I, I started freestyling on some random shit and I got good at it. Mm -hmm. And I just, it's always been something I was able to do. By the time he got to middle school, he started learning how to play the guitar. And in the middle school, Juice World says this is when he officially discovered drugs and started indulging in everything that Future specifically was rapping about. It was something that I was into early, low key, due to music. Cause like, I was a music head. So like in sixth grade, seventh grade, I'm hearing songs about sipping lean. Those are like the real influential years. I feel like, especially for like a boy. When I heard Future, the first song I ever heard by Future was "Ain't No Way Around It." The second song I've ever heard by Future is um, "Dirty Sprite," like for off the first "Dirty Sprite" mixtape. Mm -hmm. And that shit had me wanting to sip lean at like 11, 12 years old, bro. When Juice World became a freshman in high school. He had a friend by the name of Jalen that started a radio show at the school. And this is when officially Juice World displayed his rapping abilities to the public for the first time and everyone in his high school loved it. This is why he started officially recording music. People talking stupid. That's okay, we on the same page. Everybody's mad, everybody's sad and outraged. Mm. Oh, freestyle game crazy. I'm finna make it insane. Insane. Couple words off the brain, switch it to the membrane. Mm. I shoot threes like Steve Nash. Yes, boy, I straight drain. People say I'm crazy, but my bar is going insane. You hear oh, it on the radio, yeah. spinning radio waves. Before we continue the video, I'd like to give a big shout out to Opinion Outpost for sponsoring today's video. It's the holidays, so we definitely need some extra cash to spend all this money on all these gifts for family and friends. And thanks to Opinion Outpost, it's an easy way to earn extra cash simply by sharing your opinion, watching things such as Netflix shows and taking surveys for certain products. And I definitely need this extra cash because there's so much gaming stuff coming out. I need to buy a brand new game, it seems like, every single week. And the consoles are insanely expensive, so I definitely need this money. So check out Opinion Outpost. Click the link in the description below and earn extra cash quick and easy. Thank you for watching, and let's continue the video. When he first started, he initially went under the name Juice the Kid, and the first mixtape he ever released online and to everyone publicly was called What Is Love. The mixtape, though, only featured one track called Forever and was released on January 2015. However, it would be a whole year later before he would release his next project because he says he didn't have a lot of money for studio time. So a whole year later goes by and on January 31st, 2016, he drops a new EP called Juiced Up The EP, still under the name as Juiced The Kid. And this project would feature seven tracks from Juice World. He then, a couple months later, dropped another EP under the name Juice The Kid once again on July 6, 2016 called Twilight Zone EP and for this EP he actually shot a couple of music videos. Quite some time would go on once again before Juice World would release another project and on February 17th, 2017, he dropped a new EP called Affliction. It featured three new tracks and would be the first project he released under the name Juice World ditched the name Juice the Kid. <laughs> oh, what's the name change, man? Juice the Kid was named, well, uh, me and the producers I was working with, it was just like, we all agreed that I needed something different. So we just, I don't know, I just kind of turned it into that. Juice World? Yeah. So, well, I mean, why? Why though? So Juice, I had that original like, name. Um, I had the haircut and everybody knew I liked that movie with Pac. So like, that was, that was about, in the world came from like a, a social media handle. And I, I couldn't spell it like world because somebody already had it, I guess. And the world ain't really had no meaning until, like, I recently found meaning in that part of my name. Okay. Um, and it just represents just being globally, like, taking over the world pretty much, being globally known and heard globally. With the Juice World as his new artist name, he decided to continue dropping music. And on April 12th, 2017, he dropped a quick EP with two tracks called heartbroken in hollywood 999 he needed money to keep recording music so what he ended up doing was getting a job assembling cars in a factory and ultimately within three weeks he left that job and was sick and tired of it he ended up linking with a producer label called internet money and this would forever change his life because these producers made hits for him on june 15 2017 he dropped a full mixtape called 999 and on this mixtape 
was featured one of the tracks that would end up blowing him up which was called lucid dreams this mixtape caught the attention of quite a few mainstream artists and producers waka flaka said he really enjoyed this mixtape producer southside said he really loved it so this was a great step forward in his music career despite that attention he got from mainstream artists and producers he said in 2017 is when he was contemplating quitting music completely because he was frustrated with the creating process and him just not believing in his own sound while that mixtape was buzzing on soundcloud and was catching the attention of quite a few people he kept the music coming and on october 29 2017 he dropped a quick two track ep called binge drinking music he then a couple months later followed that up with a three track ep called nothing's different on december 22nd 2017 but on this ep there was a track called all girls are the same and this would be another track that would get him noticed and finally signed to a record label chicago's very own lil bibby says that his brother g money got some tracks from a dj called dj victorious and dj victorious sent g money two tracks from juice world called all girls are the same and lucid dreams g money then sent these tracks to his brother Lil Bibby, and Lil Bibby immediately wanted to sign him on the spot. Juice World, with no hesitation, agreed because he needed money to keep recording music. He ended up signing to Lil Bibby's label, Grade A Productions, which then signed under Interscope Records. And Lil Bibby immediately got to work with Juice World and started promoting the All Girls Are the Same track. He ended up linking Juice World with Cole Bennett, who is the owner of Lyrical Lemonade, and he was a buzzing video director at that time so juice world started to work with him and they released the official music video for all girls are the same in february 2018 and because the visuals were so different and unique the video started to take off as well as the song the song was pushed as the first single off his debut album and was officially released to radio stations on april 13th 2018 the track would end up peaking at number 41 on the Billboard Hot 100 and as of now has gone three times platinum, which was a huge success. So they kept that going. And on May 4th, 2018, they would release Lucid Dreams as the official second single off his debut album. They used the same formula as the first single and got with Cole Bennett once again. And this time, Lucid Dreams would become way bigger than the first single. The track initially debuted at number 74 on the Billboard Hot 100, but would end up peaking at number two on the Billboard Hot 100. And as of now, the track has gone six times platinum. And with that buzz, they immediately decided to release his debut album just a couple weeks later. On May 23rd, 2018, Juice World dropped his debut album, Goodbye and Good Riddance. The album ended up debuting at number 15 on the Billboard 200 and sold 39,000 copies within its first week. However, in the second week, because Lucid Dreams started catching a lot of buzz around this time, it moved up to number eight on the charts and sold another 45,000 copies. And then in the third week, it climbed up to number six, and sold 42,000 copies and just kept growing and growing. And as of now, the album is officially platinum and it has peaked at number four on the Billboard 200. He ended up touring this album across the world. And while doing this tour, he would stop by radio stations to promote his album and when he stopped by radio stations sometimes he would do freestyles and some of these freestyles would end up going for an hour long which was something that nobody had ever seen ever from such a mainstream artist so people were surprised that he could actually freestyle and it wasn't just some written material that normally artists do when they do freestyle so that of course caught the attention of various rappers and he started to gain a lot of respect not only for his music but for his freestyling ability and he said he stopped writing songs after lucid dreams he would just go in the studio and record off the top of his head whatever came to mind whenever you heard a beat on june 22nd 2018 juice world followed up the music and dropped a two-track ep called too soon this ep was dedicated to lil peep and XXX Tentacion, who had recently passed away. The first track was called Legends. And in this track, he makes it clear that a lot of these artists that are coming out don't make it past 21 years old due to either drugs or violence. Then the second track is called Rich and Blind. 
And on this track, he talks about how empty he is and how much the drugs have a hold on him. So he's self-reflecting on that track. The Legends track was such a well-received track, it peaked at number 29 on the Billboard Hot 100 and went platinum. In 2018, Juice WRLD was also nominated for two awards. At the BT Hip Hop Awards, he was nominated for Best New Hip Hop Artist. And for the MTV Music Awards, he was nominated for Song of the Summer with Lucid Dreams. Although he lost both of those, he says he was happy he got to perform at the MTV Music Video Awards. Juice World also did something that he was wanting to do ever since he got into the music industry, and that is working with one of his music idols, Future. What would end up happening is him and Future would release a collab mixtape called World on Drugs on October 19th, 2018. This project debuted at number two on the Billboard 200 and sold 98,000 copies within its first week. And they only released one single off the album on October 15th, 2018 called Fine China. This track ended up peaking at number 26 on the Billboard Hot 100. And as of now, it is two times platinum. Then in 2019, Juice World would gear up to drop his second album. And on February 13th, 2019, he dropped the first single off the album called Robbery. This track would end up peaking at number 27 on the Billboard Hot 100 and went two times platinum. Following this, he dropped the second single off the album on March 1st, 2019 called Hear Me Calling. And this track ended up peaking at number 38 on the Billboard Hot 100 and as of now has gone gold. Just a week later, on March 8th, 2019, Juice WRLD dropped his second studio album called Death Race for Love. And this album ended up debuting at number one on the Billboard 200 and sold 165,000 copies within its first week. This would end up being Juice WRLD's first number one album. And as of now, the album has officially gone gold. In 2019, he was nominated for quite a few awards as well. In the BET Awards, he was nominated for Best New Artist. Unfortunately, he didn't win. But on the Billboard Music Awards, he was nominated for quite a few categories, including Top Hot 100 Song, Top Rap Artist, Top Rap Album, so on and so forth. He ended up winning one award from there, which was Top New Artist. And throughout 2019, he was touring across the world once again. After releasing his album, he immediately went on tour with Nicki Minaj and Ski Mask the Slump God announced that he was going to have a joint mixtape with Juice World called Evil Twins released in 2019. Juice World also did a lot of features in 2019 for other artists. He worked with artists such as Benny Blanco, Eli Golding, and more. Then on October 4th, 2019, he dropped a track with NBA Youngboy called Bandit. This track ended up peaking at number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100, which was his second highest charting track of his career behind Lucid Dreams. And this would be the last track he released as a lead artist while he was alive. When he got off his Australian tour with the Kid LeRae, he ended up celebrating his 21st birthday for a whole week, which was on December 2nd. He would post on December 3rd on Instagram a photo of himself with the caption saying, Yesterday was my actual B-Day, I'm celebrating all week though, 999 shit. Little did we know this would be the last thing he would post. Just a couple days later, on December 8th, that early Sunday morning, Juice World and his friends were coming from a private flight from Los Angeles to Chicago. Hours before Juice World passed, he was seen on the flight in a very happy mood. When the plane landed at the Chicago airport, it was taxied to the Atlantic Aviation Terminal around 2 a.m. And when they started getting out of their private plane is when they noticed FBI agents waiting for them to search the plane. The Chicago Police Department was also called to investigate the plane. While the FBI and the police were going through their luggage, Juice World would end up having a seizure right there and then. When Juice World collapsed from his lounge chair, his girlfriend began screaming Two police officers immediately attended him, placing him to his side to help him breathe. He had blood coming from his nostrils and from his mouth. He was then given two shots of Narcan, which is a medication used to treat an opioid overdose. Juice World was still alive and conscious. They ended up putting him on a stretcher and was taken by the ambulance to the Advocate Christ Medical Center in Oaklawn. But on the way there, 
He stopped breathing and was officially pronounced dead at 3.14 a.m. And just like that, at age 21, Juice World was no longer here. The world was in shock. Nobody could understand what exactly happened and how it happened. As the days went on, more and more information came out, and it was revealed that the FBI had Juice World on their watch list due to a flight incident from a month ago. He was boarding a flight from Los Angeles to Sydney, Australia, and his team was searched by drug-sniffing dogs and custom agents. The outlets reported that Juice was eventually allowed to board the plane despite being suspected of carrying drugs. So the FBI kept tabs on him and decided at a certain moment to finally search his plane. On top of that, the pilot who was flying Juice World's private plane alerted authorities on the ground that the rapper had guns on them. So this, on top of the FBI already having an investigation open on him, caused the FBI and the Chicago police to be there that night. And what ended up happening was they found a lot of things. When they searched the luggage, they found 41 bags of marijuana, six prescription bottles of liquid codeine, along with three firearms. As more reports came out, it was revealed that Juice World had Percocet pills in his pockets, and a witness there that night said they saw Juice World grab a bunch of pills and stuff them in his mouth in an attempt to try to hide them from the police. And this is what caused the initial overdose. After this, fans were left wondering what's to happen from here. A month later on January 22nd, 2020, Juice World's family and friends release a statement. It said the following, from the bottom of our hearts, we want to thank each and every one of you for your undivided adoration and love for Juice. You guys meant the entire world to Juice and by listening to his music, watching his videos and sharing your stories about him, you're keeping his memory alive forever. We plan to honor Juice's talents, the spirit and the love he felt for his fans by sharing unreleased music and other projects that he was passionately in the process of developing. There will be a public tribute in Chicago. Details will be shared soon. Love Juice's family and team at Grade A. In that same month of January 2020, Eminem released his new album, Music to be Murdered by. And on his album, he had a feature from Juice World. This would be the first track that Juice World was a part of to be released after his passing. The track would end up peaking at number three on the Billboard Hot 100 and doing insane numbers. And obviously, Juice World was a huge fan of Eminem, having spit over his beats for an hour straight on Tim Westwood freestyling. Eminem noticed that and wanted to work with him. Shout out to Juice too, man. Like, yo, he, that kid was so talented, man. He, like, his, his freestyle he did on Westwood where he rapped for an hour. Like, what the fuck? And, and I mean, he was like, like I, he might have been written, mixing a little bit of written in there, with, right. but the way he was free, like that's the that's the shit that we used to try to do at the hip hop shop was like try to work on our freestyles, right? But be able to slip in and out of written when you need to. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If right. you got a certain punchline you want to get to to take a, take out this dude, right? So it, to be so young, he like mastered that so fucking quickly. Yeah, it's really sad, man. That that. Like, his potential was so off the chart. Following this, a couple months later, in April of 2020, Juice World's team released another statement, this time sharing information on his upcoming new music. This is what they said. Juice was a prolific artist who dedicated his life to making music. Choosing how to share his upcoming music with the world has been no easy feat. Honoring the love for Juice felt for his fans while shining a light on his talents and his spirit are the most important parts of this process to us. Early this week, Juice's mother, Carmela Wallace, announced the establishment of the Live Free 999 Fund, which will receive additional support via Grade A and Interscope Records. Tonight, we will be releasing a new song called Righteous, which Juice made from his home studio in Los Angeles. We hope you enjoy this new music and continue to keep Juice's spirit alive. Stay safe, everyone. Love, Carmela Wallace, Juice's family, and the grade A team. And just like that, on April 24th, 2020, his team released the first single off his upcoming album, which was called Righteous, and it peaked at number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100. Then on May 29th, 2020, 
they would release the second single called Tell Me You Love Me featuring Trippy Red. This track would end up peaking at number 38 on the Billboard Hot 100. Then they released the third single on July 6, 2020 called Life's a Mess featuring Halsey. This track peaked at number 9 on the Billboard Hot 100. Then they released the fourth single called Come and Go with Marshmallow on July 9, 2020. And this track peaked at number 2 on the Billboard Hot 100. And this would match his highest charting song while he was alive which was lucid dreams then on july 10th 2020 juice world's first posthumous album legends never die was officially released this album debuted at number one selling 497 thousand copies within its first week which was his largest first week sales ever in his career it would also break records and become the best-selling posthumous album over the past 25 years it was the second best-selling only to notorious big's life after death and tupac's are you still down both from 1997 then they pushed two more singles off this album on july 28 2020 they dropped the fifth single which was wishing well and this track peaked at number five on the billboard hot 100 then they started pushing the sixth single which was on august 7 2020 this track was called Smile featuring The Weeknd and this track ended up peaking at number 8 on the Billboard Hot 100. And clearly that was amazing execution by his team. The music was very well put together despite Juice World not being here. It performed very well and easily became one of the top albums of 2020. And just this past December 2nd, Juice World would have turned 22 years old. His mother released a statement on his Instagram saying, Jared and I both loved celebrating our birthdays. Mine is just two weeks before his. On our special days, we used to wish one another happy birthday dozens and dozens of times throughout the day. Now I like to think of all the happy birthdays we saved for the future. Jared would have been 22 years old today. He will forever be the light of my life. Today we celebrate him, his immense talent, creativity and his contributions to the world through his art he spoke his truth miss carmela wallace and for his birthday they released a new track for fans called real shit with benny blanco after juice world's passing lil bibby revealed that juice world had well over 2,000 songs recorded and that they could make roughly three to five albums with all those songs and juice world constantly stayed in the studio he loved recording back-to-back -back nights even when he was touring or doing radio interviews he said every night he would still go in the studio and knock out at least a track or two you know as well i have enough songs probably to drop 10 albums hey am i lying Pete? No, I, so many I got more than 200 songs 400. Uh, he would know for real too Lil Bibby also revealed recently that a second posthumous album is coming soon. I'm sure we can expect it in 2021. Despite Juice World dying at 21, his music will forever live past 21. Forever he's going to spark a new generation that's going to become artists themselves and years down the line are going to say Juice World inspired them and that's forever going to last despite him not being here and that's what a great artist does they impact millions upon millions of lives through their music and juice world said he always loved seeing that when people would smile and say that they got past their problems through his music so through that he's forever going to live rest in peace juice world you see me like when i be playing so i just be looking because i'll be like i like seeing joy because it brings me joy you know I'm not necessarily the most joyful person in the world, but that's one thing that does make me happy, making music, especially that other people can relate to, and that makes them see and makes them happy. It's like good energy. It's almost like the uh, like the law of the universe type shit, you know? We reciprocate this shit, so yeah, that's pretty much, that's, that's the, the history behind that shit.
that's it for today's video. If you guys want to support this channel further, you can do so at patreon.com backslash diverse mentality for just a dollar a month or more. You can help support this channel further. A link is in the description below. Like, comment, share, and definitely subscribe. I do videos like this daily on hip hop news and much more. So definitely subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at QuakeGW. Like us on Facebook, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.